Hey everybody, what's up? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here for another edition of The Mikey Show. And uh, today I'm getting into a video um, in a client's home. Uh, I drove two hours yesterday to do a demonstration and a, and a, and a comparison of my beloved MPD-8 DAC by Playback Designs, which I do think is the end-all be-all. Um, I don't think there's anything better. I don't care if you have certain style of listening or whatever, unless you like stuff that sounds harsh, um, then maybe you like a different DAC better. Um, but anyways, I'm just teasing with you guys. Um, you know that uh, you know that I like to do that. The bottom line was um, when I went in, you know, after spending some time there, I'm not going to turn a visit to a client's home into my opportunity to leverage my channel using their beautiful stuff, right? Because this guy had shit in his house. He had three different rigs, probably a million dollars worth of stuff. Um, he did very good. He did very good at on, in his homework and looking up what is great. And he created some really beautiful sound systems. Um, so, you know, here's something that somebody is, is using and listening to. We listened to his analog rig and um, to his DAC. In, 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 again, I'm not going to try and leverage this thing. I took a very quick video. I got a, a, a testimonial from him at the end, but I didn't want to sit and compare vinyl to digital and all this kind of stuff because he had a $150,000 on his vinyl front end. Uh, and you'll see it in the video. You'll see what was included. These, these are some of the most beautiful constructed, like I love machining. I have an eye for manufacturing. I see little details in manufacturing. It's why I pull these products and open them up and pull them apart is because I can see the holes in the manufacturing. I can shoot holes in manufacturing. Not with this Kronos Ultimate, whatever the heck it was, $50,000 table. I mean, you look at that thing and you can see where the money goes. It's like, okay, I get it. Like, this is a very exclusive, beautiful piece of machining. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's amazing, the intricacy of that manufacturing. Uh, so that was very uh, unique. And the arm, a $25,000 arm. There was a 20K DS Audio uh, uh, a cartridge that he had there. I don't think he didn't have it on that actual turntable at the time. But we were in his second Brinkman turntable that had the 20K cartridge. It's just amazing some of this stuff I'm talking about. This gentleman's system. Um, I went to Birmingham and brought the MPD-8. And in the end, um, we compared it to a DCS uh, Rossini with the Apex upgrade and with the uh, uh, outboard clock. Okay, so this thing's maxed out Rossini. Uh, forty-five dollars or $46,000. Before I left, he bought the Playback Designs and the Playback Design streamer. And his streamer was a um, Inuo statement. Um, with the external power supply, which always just befuddles me how people sell uh, a piece of gear for, I don't even know the prices on these things. I, I, I didn't ask about the Inuos thing, but I'm pretty sure it adds another $10,000 for the power supply, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But basically, they're like, if you want the good power supply, you know, pay us an extra ten grand for this damn computer. And uh, that's a whole video. Certain manufacturers make products um, for different reasons, man. And I think some products are made to throttle the piss out of you. And those products, I'm going to call them out. That's all That's all there is to it. Anyways, getting back to the subject, we went to this, this, this uh, system and we listened and it was very unique. The way that the, the gentleman listened, he had a very sensitive hearing. He's very good hearing, man. His hearing was probably like twice what mine is. He was listening at 70 dB, and that was about his typical listening level. My typical listening level is 80 dB. There's a big difference between 70 and 80 dB. It was it was uh, an interesting way to listen. I was like, how's he gonna like hear the difference uh, between the DAX? I can barely. I'm I'm trying to to strain to hear, but he's hearing full tilt. But it turned out to be a, a perfect way to test this DAC. Now. I will tell you up front, when I showed up, I made the biggest dumb, dumb mistake. I left the damn remote control right here for the DAC, and I showed up without the remote control. So what that means on this DAC is I can't change the inputs. I can change the volume. I can put the mute. I can do the power, but I can't do the input select unless I have the remote. 
So we were stuck on the, the coax input because the coax was the last one that I was using here when we were comparing to the Meitner, which is an odd input. Okay, um, he did not need a streamer. He already had a streamer, but I brought a streamer extra just in case. Thank God I brought the streamer because I was able to use my streamer then with a cheap, he had a $150 coax cable that we ran down to the DAC. The MPD-8, in other words, we weren't using the P-Link like we could have before. The MPD-8 had one arm tied behind its back for this competition. And in the end, the gentleman was, uh, when, when we were sitting down, he was like, no contest. Uh, no contest that the MPD-8 is better, it's smoother. He has an ear that's sensitive to harshness, right? Anything that's harsh or shrill or um, forward or glare, has glare, it upsets. It, it, he's able to hear it very well, and it bothers him, um, which is why he puts so much into his vinyl system, because any digital that he's ever had has been too harsh for his ear, all the way up to a $46,000 DCS, which is supposed to be the cat's meow, right? So we put in the 24K um, um, uh, uh, playback designs with the $11,000 streamer, the playback streamer. So we're looking at 35 total. Um, and I think he must have been 20K in on his streamer. So he was at maybe 60K. So we're comparing a, you know, a, 20, a, a 35K to a, a 60K or something like that. 45, 55, 65, 65K. Anyways, in the bottom, it was clear. In, in the end, it was clear he bought the, the playback. So, I mean, I don't need to really go into more. I don't need to compare it for you so you guys can hear the difference. The guy bought it, you know? So, the, what else is there to say? Um, uh, I can tell you what we heard, which was it was definitely smoother and silkier. The MPD-8 has, it, 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 where it crushes is in the high frequency. And the high frequency where most DACs, 90% of DACs, will be harsh. And they will quote unquote tell you if you're listening to a harsh recording, which I think is BS. The playback designs handles the high frequency in a way that is palatable and very easy to listen to. It does not roll off. It is not soft sounding. Anybody that says the MPD-8 is soft sounding has their ears, they don't know how to discern good sound. They are very rudimentary. They just, they don't know how to listen, okay? This guy's ears were extremely developed and he had a great way of telling us how the difference was in the high frequency to the point where he purchased the unit. Um, it's just more silky. It's just more smooth. Now he could listen. He really was into 80s music. He could listen now to his 80s music and, and, and what happened was he listened to songs that were typically too harsh for him in, with the DCS. He listened to those songs and played them back and was like with the MPD-8, wow, I can listen to this song. It's not making me wince. It's not making me, uh, you know, with, the, with those, those, those certain parts. Sold, he said. Sold, man. Forget about it. It's, it's. I, I want it. So, um, um, I will go through the, the, the system really quick, so you can see what an end user system looks like. These are the folks that I service. Um, I provide very high level sales and um, consultation for uh, end users. I come to your house and um, I set up and I make sure you're across the line. Um, so, uh, anyways, just wanted to bring that to you and let you know a little bit more about the video before I started. So thanks for joining and uh, hold on. Hey gang, what's up? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here again for another edition of The Mikey Show. And I am in an absolutely beautiful, stunning uh, audio system. And let me share it with you really quick. So hold on. We have Botticelli speakers from Alcivox, made in Spain. Just gorgeous ribbon speakers. These are all ribbon, okay? So there's no membrane. These are straight ribbons, just like a MagnaPan tweeter would be. The whole speaker, though, is like that, right? All the way across. In e extremely quick transient response. Uh, really very, very fast speaker. The construction on this is, is amazing. You can see all the way in the back, the beautiful wood, the gloss lacquer. Um, we have the inputs back here and those inputs up top are for the onboard crossover. As we get down, those three inputs are so that you can buy the optional um, crossover, which is the outboard crossover, which is an uh, amazing, amazing piece uh, where they really step up their game in terms of a passive crossover. I mean, that's one hell of a passive crossover. 
you can sort of see the size of it. It's pretty big. Now we move over here to the vinyl section of the rig. We'll start up here and we've got a Kronos, what model is that? Kronos Pro, or Kronos Limited, yeah. Kronos Limited. And uh, this is a, I mean, the machining and the build on this thing are absolutely stunning. Like I have looked over this thing little by little and all this aluminum work and uh, we've got phenolic sandwich layer with aluminum on the outside here on these uh, decks or whatever you call them. I don't know if that's a plinth or what they call that. Um, the platters, this this one, this is a counterweight that rotates, so this spins one way, this way, this one spins the other way to offset the forces. Um, it's a pretty sweet piece. It's a 50K piece, the turntable, the arm right there is 25K. Um, and uh, what what is the name of that arm? Is there a name for it? Or Discovery RS. Discovery RS uh, is the name of this tone arm. And then he uses an Ortofon, uh, this is a black, what, right? Ortofon Cadenza Bronze. Cadenza Bronze, okay, with a... Retipped by Soundsmith. Uh, Retipped by Soundsmith with a ruby cantilever, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, right down here, this big thing, you can see the lights on top. This is a super capacitor uh, for the power supply. It stores DC, so, and then it switches back and forth. So never at any time is the AC wall in contact with the motor because it fills up one side and then it switches to the other side and it's a way to keep um, AC off the, um, so that you're never using it direct from the wall. Right here's the Solution 757. This is a 76K uh, Phono Pre that is also, that, that does MMMC and uh, optical as well. So you, this you can use with a DS cartridge. And furthermore, this is a tape head pre. So it does absolutely everything in terms of an analog uh, uh, line stage, or an analog stage rather. Uh, incredible. And then we've got the Kronos power supply down at the bottom, which is uh, mass loaded with granite. Over here we have the DCS Apex. This is the Rossini Apex. This is a $46,000 in the clock underneath. So together they're 46 grand. Um, up here we have uh, integrated, which is the um, the Humboldt by AudioNet. Quite a piece, uh, 65k. That's, I think that's what Correct. it goes for now. Something like that. Um, and then over here we've got the Inuo statement and the um, upgraded power supply underneath. Uh, so this is really, really quite a system. Uh, we had the MPD8 playback there, and we had the streamer on top. Um, and I will take you quickly over here into the sunroom where we've got some Alta audio speakers, which are really beautiful speakers made in the United States. And then as we make our way over to here, we've got the whole separate rig on the secondary rig, which is a um, Brinkman turntable. Um, and I don't know the details about this. I do think I did catch that this DS audio cartridge right here is that a twenty thousand dollar cartridge? It's a twenty thousand dollar cartridge, from what I heard. Um, but he likes this one better, this Grandmaster. Uh, this is a DS Grandmaster, the DS, and then that goes with this DS Audio Phono Pre, and then this is the M Labs EQ that they use for this. Here's a Vinnie Rossi preamp. Um, we've got the Dan D'Agostino uh, stereo amp. Over here is the Brinkman. This is a tube power supply for the DC power supply for that turntable. What's this turntable called? The Taurus. The Taurus. Okay. This thing is just, what a crazy piece of machinery. This thing looks like it must weigh 200 pounds. <laughs> and then um, what is this thing we have under here? Niagara. Oh, that's an audio quest, like a line conditioner, right? Isn't that what a Niagara is? Like a power conditioner? Yeah, that's the AudioQuest power conditioner. The AudioQuest power conditioner. And then we've also got a Puritan over here, Puritan Audio, yeah, PSM-156. Yeah, I love the Puritan and I'm not currently using it. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. And then what is this, DCS? Is that a Bartok the or something? Bartok Apex, okay. yeah. Bartok Apex right here. I think it's currently maybe 22, something like that. 22K for that one. Um, so um, tell us what, uh, what did you think about the difference between the uh the two DACs we listened to the DCS you have the DCS Apex Rossini we yeah. listened to the difference between that and the playback designs what did you hear so I've, I've owned the Rossini for 
three or four years and had it upgraded to the Apex model last year. I quite like it. It's very detailed. It's very, you know, highly resolving DAC, but I've always found fault with its with its portrayal of, of the tonalities a little a little bit to the bright side for me or a little bit it runs a little bit cooler and brighter, a little bit, you know, uh, a little in your face sometimes with rock music. And so as a result in using Rune, I, I EQ the treble down just a bit. I know that's a, a sort of a, a, a thing to admit to audiophile community that you use EQ in your system, but I've always done that with, with that source because it's just too much for my ears. I'm, I'm a type of listener who's a little bit sensitive to treble and I don't like sort of those, you know, splashy, you know, uh, uh, types of uh, gear, you know. So the thing that uh, we put in the MPD-8 in the system and listening to it, you know, and it's, you know, uh, without without any processing whatsoever in Rune, just listening to the, the un, un-EQ'd signal out of the, the playback designs was more palatable to me. It just sounded more, the treble was sweeter sounding. And, uh, and... Um, initially, I thought, okay, well, this is a sweeter sounding treble. Maybe the unit's not quite as resolving as the Rossini. But as we let it sit there in the system and acclimate to the system, um, I started hearing the same level of, of resolution, same level of, of uh, detail and, uh, that I'm getting out of the Rossini, but, in a, but in, a, in a, a tonality that's a lot more pleasing. To my to my ears, so I, I've really, really, really enjoyed what I heard out of it. It's uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, anyway, sorry. No worries. Okay, yeah. So we'll take a second. He had to take a call. Um, so uh, yeah. So uh, uh, this guy has really exceptional hearing, and he's very sensitive. Man, we listened to his audio system, and he's kind of got it turned down a little, like less than than lighter than I would normally listen to it. Um, but once we put in the playback. I connected to the music a lot more. Typically, I'd be listening a little bit louder, but I started to understand the way he was listening is listening into the music, typically a little bit different than how I listen. Um, but the difference was clear between DCS and the playback. The connection was there. If I'm not mistaken, um, I heard you say that, and we'll, we'll, I'll keep this on. The <laughs> say hi, Isaac. <laughs> um, is um, I heard you say that... Um, that you felt the MPD-8 was was actually more competitive uh, with your vinyl. Yeah, so I mean, I've I've really pushed my vinyl rig to sound really incredible, and felt like over the last bit of time that I've kind of left my digital rig and my main rig, I've kind of left it behind. And I think what more, what it really is is that it, by comparison, it's the, the DCS Rossini sounds a little etched or a little bit harsh sometimes um and the, the the playback designs reminds me more of what i expect out of vinyl it reminds me more of the organic kind of uh quality you get out of a out of vinyl it's it's not as it's not as um uh, strident you know in sounding so was it soft in any way rolled off in any way no no it's everything's there it's it's interesting the tonality is quite similar i would say maybe it's just a tiny tiny bit fuller in the bottom end than the dcs but it, it's, it's not like you're sitting there thinking the tonality is greatly different it's just a little more refined or sweeter sounding in the treble so when you sit there your ears kind of your your brain relaxes because you're yes. not sitting there fighting off all that you know sort of the the hardness of that top end you know that's totally. uh, there with a lot of dax it's a lot more natural sounding a lot more yeah, the word that keeps coming to me is sweeter, sweeter sounding treble. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Yep. So uh, when uh, when people accuse me of saying that the playback designs MPD eight is the end all be all, and I think it's, the, I still think it's the end all be all. <laughs> but hey, what do I know? Anyways, thanks for joining, y'all. We'll see you.